gorgeousities, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well. Uh, this is day seven of my week of eating. Welcome back to the kitchen. I'm okay today. I feel like whatever that cold thing was, I think most of it's gone. I still feel a little bit, a bit tired and achy, but for the most part, yay, gone. Um, so I've got a mad run around day today. Um, I'm playing catch up. So because of that, and as with everything else, everything in life, my life is planned, I'm having freezer food again today. Yay, it's just quick, convenient, easy. Well, actually, one of them isn't freezer food. I'm going to be having, this is the sweet potato stew. I'm really pleased with it, really, really pleased with it. Tastes gorgeous, great. But also it was so quick and easy to make. I think that d decision to just chuck everything in the pan and walk away for 15 minutes, brilliant. And I was thinking about it. Oh, so I had my bowl for lunch yesterday. I had a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit more in the evening. I mean, I had my soup in the evening, but I just fancied another little taste of it. It was gorgeous. And I was thinking, what a really great adaptable recipe it could be for any of you you know essentially we're starting with an onion and garlic don't we pretty much start everything with that a sweet potato a tin of tomatoes and a tin of chickpeas or as i did last night a tin of beans i am going to do it with chickpeas at some point because i think they'll be gorgeous now their recipe had also uh, included an aubergine and i think that would be really lovely but also I was thinking in the summer, courgettes, you know, when we start to get that glut, especially really small sort of tender ones. So I'm thinking, yeah, think of all those Mediterranean veg, the tomatoes, aubergine, courgettes, yum, yum, yum. And then I thought, and this would not be for me because <laughs> I don't like mucking around with my food. I don't like fruit in my, I don't like pudding in my main, but, um, what about some chopped up dried apricots? Suddenly we're in Morocco. It's gonna taste like a, a sort of a tagine. So if you like that kind of thing, I think try the recipe as it is and then maybe uh, another occasion, try it with the apricots. And then the other thing you can do is you can soak the apricots um, either overnight or during the day if you're gonna cook it in the evening just to help them plump up so that when they go in they're gonna take the juices more lovely very pleased with it it's a cheap economical dish i'm supposed to be heating it up for my lunch now i think we'll just chat first of all so what did i reckon so i reckon 35 pence obviously using my own tomatoes and beans but tomorrow or day after i'll be doing a final video of all my costs but plus <clears throat> trying to cost all of this out if you'd had to buy tomatoes and beans and a squash and that bit of cheese because I had free cheese this week if you remember so um so that's that's my lunch in a minute and then for supper tonight I've done the same thing so that was yesterday's cooking it's not gone into the freezer there'd be no point because I'd be getting it straight back out to keep it chilled I had in here I've got pea risotto for my supper tonight yum yum so obviously that's come out of the freezer just sat that on top that's kept my uh, sweet potato stew chilled overnight <clears throat> so supper is going to be 40 pence i don't have any cheese left so i'll just have it, it have it as it is so my combination today is what i 75 pence i mean that's another day under a, qu a quid brilliant but what i thought we could do i might just yeah let's have a let's have, i'm going to heat this in a second but let's have a sit down there's a couple of other things shopping list for all of this week's stuff and something else about the beans in the freezer so come and join me for a seat and we'll chat through those last little bits on the last day of my week of eating i mean it's not my last day i'm going to eat tomorrow and the next week and the next week but in terms of presenting a video a day of what I'm cooking and eating. We're nearly at the end. There was something else I also wanted to remember to say about the sweet potato stew, and that is that 
you know, in some ways, it's a little bit reminiscent of the fasolada, the Greek bean stew, in terms of, you know, potatoes, beans, tomatoes. Uh, of course, in the fasolada, there's also carrots and celery. Similar-ish, but in a way, they're worlds apart because the fasolada has that lovely, very delicate scent, taste of the broth from the thyme. And of course, this sweet potato stew is really punchy with the spices. So, yeah, they're kind of reminiscent of each other, but worlds apart in terms of one's quite delicate and one's quite punchy. All good stuff. One of the things I wanted to mention today, um, just to be really clear about the beans I've been using and cooking with all week from the freezer, when they went into the freezer, they were basically fresh from the garden, as in the beans were still growing on the plants, the, the pods were still green. These are not dried beans. These are beans that are really, really, really fat in the pod and they're just about to start going over towards drying, but caught just before that moment. So that the fattest, they're juiciest, they're loveliest, I pod them, put them into my Tupperware trays and sling them straight into the freezer. I don't even bother blanching. They just go straight in the freezer. So when I'm cooking with them, and it may be that I've let them defrost for three or four hours in the afternoon before I cook with them in the evening. Sometimes I forget. Um, but essentially, I'm cooking with fresh beans, not dried beans. So with the sweet potato last night, that was, what was it in the end, 15, 20 minutes. I think I left it on the hob for about 20 minutes, but I turned the heat off after 15 minutes. So hence, that was a really quick one. The fasolada speeded up by the fact that I'm using what are essentially fresh beans, not from dried. So that when I do start ploughing into my dry bean supplies, I was talking about the other day, they will cook, some will, some will take an hour of cooking, some will take an hour and a half, but get them cooked up, then frozen, so that then, again, when I'm using them from the freezer, they're actually cooked. Do, please do not eat dried beans after just 15 minutes of bubbling on the hob. They will not be cooked. Okay, so that's the bean bit out of the way. I just wanted to be really, really clear about that. I know a couple of folk have been a bit confused over the week about cooking times and me using these beans. I am essentially using beans fresh. It's as if I've gone to the garden, picked a load off the vines, come home, potted them straight into the pan. It's as simple as that. It's just that it's April now and not September. Good, 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 good. Now, shopping list. So, obviously at the beginning of the week you saw my shopping and it was, again, it was the usual kind of small shop. However, everything I've eaten this week, um, if you were to make a shopping list of everything I've eaten this week, you would need to put on your shopping list. This would be your vegetable shopping list. You would need onions, garlic, leeks, courgettes, potatoes, regular, sweet potatoes, peas, gigantes beans, Coco Sophie beans, tomatoes, celery, carrots, mushrooms, chickpeas. Oh no, I didn't actually use chickpeas in the end, did I? I was going to do my the sweet potato stew with chickpeas and I didn't in the end but eh, put chickpeas on your list anyway um so that's your veg list onions garlic leek courgettes uh, potatoes sweet potato peas gigantes beans cocoa sophie beans tomatoes celery carrots mushrooms and as I mentioned in the middle of the week probably in hindsight it would have been a good idea to buy maybe a big head of cabbage I love Savoy, I love those really dark green cabbages, or a load of kale to add in some green. Never mind. So that's your veg on your shopping list for grains, brown rice, risotto rice, 
pearl barley. It's a nice mix of grains, isn't it? And then in the other department, uh, corn, Q-U-O-R-N, not corn as in sweet corn, corn, the queen's corn. Um, herbs, the only herbs I used this week were, it was that thyme. Spices, so all sorts of spices, obviously the spices in the curry, spices in the sweet potato stew, just build up your own little collection. Oil, stock, cheese, and butter. There you go. So if you bought all those things, uh, you'd be able to do my, um, my cooking this week. So when I come to do costings in the next video, uh, well, we'll come on to that in the next video. We'll come to that when we come to it. But I think, uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for this, for this week of sharing my cooking and eating with you. I've really enjoyed all my food this week. Again, I always enjoy my food. Um, it's, you know, there's a nice variety of tastes from the spicy stuff, herby stuff, and the really gorgeous uh, risotto, that kind of creamy, naughty comfort stuff. Um, and I was so glad I had some leftover mushroom risotto. That was really yummy. So yeah, a nice mix of things, different soups. Quite often it will be soup for lunch and then something more substantial for dinner. Um, sometimes I'll have something substantial in the middle of the day and something lighter in the evening, you know, flex it around. I don't have soup necessarily every single day, but it's quite, um, I would say maybe five out of seven days a week, I probably have lunch for soup. It's just quick and easy, isn't it? And, you know, you saw this week I was getting through the soups, I made the squash and pearl barley. So next week I'll think about making another soup, maybe another two different types of soups to go in the freezer to build that stock up again. And so I've got a rotation of, of flavours. That's what it's all about is, I mean, I would quite happily eat pea risotto or mushroom risotto every single day of my life. Um, but yeah, ha having a mix is good in terms of both not getting bored of our food, but also uh, nutrition. You know, we get little different bits of of our needs met by having lots of different lots of different foods and lots of different veggies good stuff i hope that has been interesting illum illuminating <laughs> i'm not sure i think you know maybe because we're coming into another growing year and i know some of you got your first ever garden this year which is brilliant um some of you it's your it's it's your second year but it's going to be your first full year so I hope that actually by sharing all these meals I've had, and you've seen that all the uh, recipes are there for you, uh, that these are things which are so easy and quick to make. And generally, they are there in my diet because they're things which I can make really easily from stuff I've grown and it's stuff that's easy to grow it's all easy I'm saying it's all easy yeah that's the that's the essence of it a lot of my diet is based around the fact that this is what I've grown so this is what I eat so my recipes are usually very garden or allotment friendly that's what I'm trying to get at so maybe a few of them have, over the course of the week you can kind of lodge them up here and maybe if you weren't thinking of growing so many beans this year, you might now you might now think, oh yeah, let's grow some extra beans because some of those recipes look really lovely. We'll grow some extra tomatoes, whatever it is. I hope it's been, uh, yeah, I hope it's been fun, illuminating, and maybe a bit inspiring. And you know, whether you have a garden or not, this is all really economical stuff to cook and eat but the bottom line is this it's all really yummy food I don't want to eat meager portions of miserable food I want really yummy stuff all right lovelies um I will see you again day after tomorrow and I'm going to talk a lot tomorrow about numbers and don't be scared I'm doing the maths for you but I'm also going to be planning my next shopping trip 
and it will be a bit different based on what's going on for the whole of this week. So I hope you will join me for that too. And then we'll get back to some other kinds of videos. We'll get out of the kitchen <laughs> eventually. We're always in the kitchen though, aren't we? Because we all have to eat and you can't eat unless you cook. Right, that's it. I'm going to start waffling otherwise. See you in a couple of days. Until then, have fun in your kitchens. Have fun experimenting in your gardens this year if you're trying something new. If you're trying chickpeas for the first time, oh, gorgeous. When I, <clears throat> when I have a garden of my own again one day, I'll definitely be growing chickpeas. Gorgeous. Until the next one, cheerio.